off the road trying my very cheap homebrew camera mount. So thought I'd do a cycle chat. Uh, the topic is the six best bargains in ham radio for under $60. So um, I've got a list, there's no doubt more, but I've restricted myself to six. So keep listening and especially if you're just starting out in amateur radio, I'll talk about some things that are probably the best bargains you can get. They will vary a bit because of your various interests. Some things might not be of interest, so I've tried to keep it fairly general. Anyway, number one on my list is an RTL SDR. I've done some recent videos on them, but you can get them for well under $60. maybe even under 30 or 40 dollars they're not all the same um, I've got one of the cheap ones and it starts off at about 64 66 megahertz and goes up to I think it's about 1.7 gigahertz but you can do a lot better than that um, as an example some of them might start at 25 or 30 megahertz and that's really handy because then you can tune the 6 meter amateur band, hopefully also 10 meters and even 11 meters. Otherwise, if your range is limited, then you'll have to build a front end converter. You can also buy front end converters as well. Um, then there's some, I think, that even go into the HF range. So look up RTL SDR. Uh, you can get a lot of them on on eBay and um, yep that's one of the things that you can get for well under $60 maybe even under $30 and it's a lot of listening fun even if yours only covers VHF uh, they do come often come with a basic antenna not particularly good so if you can get something that's outdoors like a quarter wavelength uh, or a whip or something that's about 50 centimeters long, then that will cover the two meter amateur band and a lot of frequencies either side for receiving. And uh, with the RTL SDR, you just plug it into your computer and you download software called SDR Sharp, at least that's the one that I use, and then you can be uh, receiving uh, pretty much all modes, FM, AM, SSB, uh, you might be able to do some digital modes with other things. But yeah, very low price for a receiver that covers a very large part of the VHF and UHF spectrum. So that's the first bargain, RTL SDR. Um, apart from the differences I mentioned before with the frequency range, another thing, if I was buying it again, I would get one with a TCXO, um, temperature controlled crystal oscillator. You might have seen my video on the one that I was trying to receive 1296 megahertz and it drifted quite a bit in frequency by up to five or so kilohertz. So if you've got one with a, um, RTL, uh, a TCXO then yours will be more stable. So worth paying a bit extra for some extra frequency stability. Uh, number two on the list. I know that some people don't like them but I'm going to say it anyway, a cheap Baofeng handheld. A uh, very cheap one will give you 5 watts output on 2 motors, 70 centimetres FM. If you just got into amateur radio then you'll be able to make some contacts on that uh, through FM repeaters if you've got them in your area. Simplex not so good especially with the standard antenna supplied. I've done some videos on better antennas you can use. There's one called the flower pot which is basically a vertical dipole made of coax cable. So look up some of my videos on that and you can get some better range or performance out of your Baofeng handheld. So yeah for under $50 US or in fact under $60 that's where I've pretty much drawn the line. Around $60 US uh, is about the limit for the six best bargains that I'm going to talk about. Baofeng handheld can get you onto amateur radio, but you can do some interesting things with it like satellites. I've done a couple of videos on using amateur satellites. Uh, better to 
get two handhelds, one for transmit, one for receive, as you will be needing one to listen to your own signal coming back to see how well you're getting into the satellite. And also um, position reporting. In fact, I did another video on a bike of me um, transmitting APRS, and I was just using a bow thing connected up to mobile phone and uh, transmitting uh, GPS uh, position data. So that's the second um, best bargain, under $60 US. Another thing, um, test instruments, a Nano VNA. You should be able to get one for under 60 US, although there are some that cost a bit more. But yeah, a Nano VNA, uh, VNA stands for Vector Network Analyzer, and that's basically a universal RF test instrument. So you can do all sorts of measurements. I've done a few videos on them, so um, have a look up some of those. But yeah, basically big screen, couple of sockets and a menu thing where you can do various adjustments. Things like you can trace various curves, a bit like an antenna analyzer. Um, you can look at antenna SWR, you can look at impedances. You can put various resistors and capacitors, inductors across the two ports. Some measurements require you to use both sockets on the VNA, others are just um, uh, the one socket. So a really versatile bit of test instrument and you can get it, the cheaper ones, for under $60 US just. You may already have one and you can certainly get them well under $60. In fact, you might be able to find some of the cheaper ones for under $20 and that is a multimeter. Um, really basic electronic test instrument. The simple ones do voltage, current, resistance. Some of the better ones might have capacitance even frequency if, if you're lucky although the range of some of those might be a bit limited a few things with multimeters they're not all the same um, some things that you might want to do are not covered on the cheaper multimeters for instance if you want to measure high currents cheaper multimeters might not do that um, they might only go up to a few hundred milliamps whereas you might be wanting to measure up to 10 or, or 20 amps or, or so and that's where a better quality of multimeter might be desirable. Now it's getting a bit steep here so I'm not sure if I'll pedal. This is only a single gear bike. I might get off and wheel the bike up but I can still I can still talk. You have to be careful with some of the markings on them. They're not always uh, correctly um, what they are and that is the voltage rating. You would not use a cheap multimeter to do mains voltage tests use a good quality multimeter for that so uh, a cheap multimeter is still good and worthwhile for a lot of ham homebrew projects but um, stick to using uh, measurements with lower voltages for them and and, uh, and you'll be fine and I've done a few QRP videos uh, where I've operated from here and had some VX contacts um, going the other way to the sewage farm though so you won't see that in this video yeah, so multimeter, that's our fourth item. Number five. Now this is something that isn't going to appeal to all new hams. You will have to know Morse code if you're going to get the most use of it. But if you want to get on the air and have overseas contacts, the cheapest possible way, and you're a little bit confident with building um, assembling kits, as this is a kit, then you could consider a CW transceiver kit. In terms of value for money, like getting something for under $60 US, there's um, a QCX series of kits. They're basically single band CW transceivers. And I think they put out five watts. They've got a SUPET receiver, so better than the really simple, cheap things. And yep, you can work DX if conditions are good. Um, for working DX, probably the most likely band you'll work is on 14 megahertz or 20 meters, and the QCX is mono band, so you'll need to decide which one you're going to buy. On the other hand, though, if you just want to make casual CW contacts and a lot of them and quite easily, then my favorite band for that is 7 megahertz or 40 meters. Uh, you might want to end up getting one of each. So yeah, that's the QCX Mini from the Q 
QRP Labs. Uh, that's Pan Summers. You might have already assembled a few kits then. You might be confident enough to assemble um, one of the um, QCX kits. If you're not, you're probably better off to start with some of the really basic kits just to get your soldering skills up and then you can um, uh, move on to something like the QCX. All right, um, what other things? The QCX is number five, now number six. Now there's quite a few things, I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna have for number six. Um, if you're just starting out and don't have a lot of tools, then a basic tool set, you could probably get something like that for under $60 US um, with the basic hand tools like your pliers, sets of screwdrivers, wire cutters, wire strippers, etc. Or on the other hand, if you do already have tools, then maybe something else. Something I would say, definitely if you're going to be operating amateur radio portable, is a telescoping pole. I've done some videos comparing different types. Um, something like a spider beam is definitely beyond your budget or definitely cost you way more than $60 US. But here in Australia, we've got a supply called Haverford, which mainly stock for the fishing market. But yeah, you can get like um, seven or eight or nine meter poles for under uh, $60 US. And that is a light duty type pole, but if you're using thin wire, Operating QRP then that would be fine uh, for a, a lightweight portable in-fed wire type antenna like I often use when I'm portable QRP. Um, another possibility if you aren't inclined to operate portable is just lots and lots of antenna wire. As much as you can. Stranded insulated wire would be okay but um, yeah, $60 worth, I haven't looked up wire prices lately, but you should be able to get a fair amount of wire for that. And you could just spend all your time, especially if you've got, you've got a bit of a yard and some trees in it, just making different sorts of wire antennas. And you could make loops, you could make half squares, you could make, well, V-beams use quite a lot of wire, um, so do rhombics. But yeah, there's all different types of antennas you can make out of wire, wire ground planes, so many choices you could even make wire beams a wire beam with say three elements will give you as much gain as a commercially made beam that might cost hundreds if not thousands of dollars the only thing with the wire beam of course is that you are a fixed direction but you can do some clever things so you can reverse beams by switching them around that brings us to the end of the video i've covered six best bargains you can get for under $60 US. Anyway, if you've got any ideas as to what you think is a great bargain for under $60 US, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed it. And if you would like more videos like this where I'm just chatting about a topic, riding along the bike, there's pretty much a minimum of editing. So it actually takes me far less time to do a video like this than any other type of videos. Not too far from the beach, I might actually go there. Alright, look what we've got here. Uh, looks like we can't go over the path, so we'll do a U-turn and go back home. Something else that's great value are of course my ebooks. A total of eight titles for five dollars US each. Paperback is also available. They cover a wide range of topics including low power amateur radio, antennas and getting started. For more information visit my website vk3ye.com or search their titles on Amazon. Oh, and here's something else you might be interested in. On the 14th and 15th of August, 
there's a online ham expo. A lot of people will be talking on various topics of ham radio. It's basically organised by Eric Gouff, 4Z1UG. And anyway, I am speaking on two topics. So uh, one of the topics is pedestrian mobile antennas. I'll be talking about two antennas that have worked for me, HF Pedestrian Mobile. Um, now's a good time to be getting started on HF Pedestrian Mobile with the improvements in the solar cycle. So HF conditions will start to get better. And of course in the Northern Hemisphere, it's still summer. So um, great time to get out and operate HF Pedestrian Mobile. The other thing that I'll be talking about is six ways you can get contacts. So that's more pitched at newcomers to radio and that's a presentation that I will do. So look up the Ham Expo and I'll be a speaker and make sure you tune in to me at that time and hear me talk and you can ask me questions on that.